بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد It is the holy month of Ramadan It is the month that is called شهر الله The month of Allah We are fasting which in the tradition we have that fasting is of God's and He will reward it or He is the reward of it In such an important time period we need to reflect and to try to make ourselves better Muslims. We have to exhibit better behavior, better practices, better actions, because these actions is what a li Islamic lifestyle is. Our lifestyle is what our actions, our abundant actions are. We live in a time period that instead of God being the corner, sorry, the core of our lives, humanity is now the core, human life is the core of our life. We are living in a time period where we are being told that man should be free to do whatever he wants, that man should be free to speak and do and live and act however he wants. But instead, the Islamic teachings tell us that we should follow the instructions of God, that God will give us, will help us with the desires that we have, as long as those desires are healthy and preferable for us. We live in a time period where absolute truth is being negated and they are telling us that there is no absolute truth. Believe in what you want. But we as followers of Islam, followers of the Holy Quran, we know that the path is one and that logic tells us that there is one path, the two things that contradict cannot both be, um, exist at the same time. Of the foundations of an Islamic life, we talked about Tawheed, the oneness of God. We talked about the Walayat of the Ahlul Bayt. And today we're going to continue with the Walayat of the Ahlul Bayt being one of the core components of a Muslim lifestyle and one of the core components that we should strengthen in this month, inshallah. When we look at the traditions, a very interesting story we read from Imam Rida alayhi salam and as Shaykh Asaduq mentions, when the eighth Imam came and was going to Marv, was going to the holy city, uh, it was not Mashhad, became Mashhad after he was martyred, but going to Marv, the, the capital of the Muslim empire at that time, he passed by Neshawu. When he passed that city, many scholars came to see what the son of the Prophet, the grandson of the Prophet came to teach because Imam Rida had a very important station in Medina. So they came to learn from him. Hundreds, thousands of people came. Scholars came and asked him to share a tradition where they could learn. In one of the tradition that he teaches, he says this statement in Amaliya Shaykh Asadu, La ilaha illallah hisni, faman dakhala hisni, amina min adabi. That the word La ilaha illallah is my protection, is my fortress, and whoever enters my fortress is protected from my punishment. The Tawheed, the oneness of God, is the fortress. And as long as we're inside this fortress, we'll be fine. So we think that maybe this narration is over. And this is one of the key components of Islam, La ilaha illallah. But Imam Rida salam includes with this very famous statement of La ilaha illallah, the oneness of God, Tawheed, this statement, فَلَمَّا مَرَّتْ الرَّاهِلَةً Nadana بِشُرُوطِهَا وَأَنَا مِنْ شُرُوطِهَا And when it was going to pass, he came back and mentioned that with its conditions, with the conditions of Tawheed, what are one of the conditions of Tawheed? أَنَا مِنْ شُرُوطِهَا I am of those conditions. Meaning that the walayat of Ahd Ahlul Bayt is one of the conditions of Tawheed. If we want our Tawheed, our oneness of God to be accepted, we have to be under the umbrella, under the connected to the tree of Walayat, had we mentioned last week. And we need to confirm that the Ahlul Bayt are the holy guides after the Holy Prophet of Islam, and that their speech and their sayings have pervaded force for us, and they are a role model for us to follow. From the discussion of Walayat, there are, there's another tool, and we talked about the same tool in Tawheed. That in this month, while well, right now we're in the month of Jamkaran, one of the questions people ask 
is how can we connect to Imam Mahdi? How can we connect to him when we cannot see him when he is in the occultation? And the answer to this is through our hearts, through knowledge by presence. That Allah has given us ma'rifat and understanding or cognition through light, through nur. And it's true that we can connect to Imam Mahdi, our knowledge of him can become more detailed through the light, through the light of ma'rifah and understanding. To prove this point, we see a tradition in one of the old books of Ghaybat of Nu'mani. This is one of the old books that has many traditions about the occultation of Imam Mahdi and has been translated in English. In this book, there is the story that a group of pious people came from Yemen and they came to ask the Messenger of Allah a very simple and important question that everybody asks their leader. The question of successorship. They ask them, who is your successor? And in this story and in this narration, the Prophet of Islam mentions a few verses of the Qur'an alluding to the fact that that person has these uh, traits. And then it becomes more and more detailed. They ask the Prophet of Islam, who is he? Who is your successor? They want more knowledge. So the Prophet instructs them to go through the rows of the believers and to go and find out th through yourself. Who do you think, basically, who you think is the successor of the Prophet. Because we understand that successorship should possess some of the qualities, or almost all the qualities, or all the qualities that the Prophet of Islam has. And therefore, he should be appointed by God. He should be different than other people. So there, this, the people of Yemen, the pious people, begin to go through, and they find one person. And they come to the Holy Prophet of Islam and ask, is this your successor? And then the Prophet of Islam confirms that they have chosen the right person. And, he, and he, they're asked, how come? He says, they say that whenever فَمَنْ أَهْوَتْ إِلَيْهِ قُلُوبٌ فَإِنَّهُ هُوَ The Prophet of Islam told them, whoever your hearts incline, that is him. And then they said, it is him, because when, O Messenger of Allah, when we looked at the people, our hearts did not incline to any of them. When we saw this man, when we saw Ali ibn Abi Talib, our hearts trembled and our souls felt assured. Our eyes shed tears, our chests became pleased as if he was our father and we were his children. So our hearts inclined to this person. Our hearts felt assured, we began to cry, we thought that he was our father. So these pious people from Yemen, through Ma'rifa, by Nuraniya, by light, by Nur, they found the successor of the Holy Prophet of Islam. And they remained loyal to Imam Ali. They fought alongside Imam Ali in the Battle of Jaman. They fought alongside Imam Ali in the Battle of Safin. And they, were became, they became martyred. So we ask ourselves, how can we develop this light in Nur? As you know, when the barriers are removed, it is much easier to connect. When it's as if we have glasses that are tainted, or glasses that are smeared, and we cannot see right, we'll see blurry. But when you clean these, cl cleanse these glasses, when these glasses are clean, when these lenses are clean, you will be able to see, and you will be able to see sharply. When our hearts are purified, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to witness. You're, you'll be able to connect to Imam Mahdi So what can we do? We need to develop a relationship with Imam Mahdi We need to develop a relationship with the Ahlul Bayt Because this is one of the key fundamentals of a Muslim life We need to do their ziyarats from close or from far When inshallah the situation is better We can come to the shrines of the Ahlul Bayt And connect with them, take our family members We can spend for them and this will give us a very good experience. Two, we can do ziyarats from away, from afar. Three, we can have majalis for them, either, either online or for them. And fifth, we can learn more about them 
and we can read more about their lives and learn about their speech and what they have said because if people knew how beautiful the speech of the Ahlul Bayt are, they would follow them. And sixth, we can keep a time period for ourselves and we can reflect and think about Imam Mahdi and we can talk with him in whatever language that we know and we can talk to him and dress him and we know that he is watching over his ummah and we know that he is watching over us. Inshallah, this month of Ramadan is the month that after it ends, we realize a new relationship with Imam Mahdi. Ajillah ta'ala faraja. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa jifaraja.